Hello, Star Wars Unboxing fans. Welcome to another quick episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, and I may have kind of featured this product in a past episode, but with the with the uh, approaching of the 40th anniversary to the day, mind you, of the return of the Jedi movie being released, I felt it was time to revisit this line of collectibles and this one very specific line. I'm talking mainly about the Sigma collectible line. What is Sigma? Well, Sigma was a ceramics company. I think they may still be in business. I'm not sure. I have to look that up. But uh, they um, licensed out a set of um, interesting collectibles. I'll put a video over this of my collection of Sigma. And they actually put out a whole line of figurines and, you know, kind of household items like a toothbrush holder and soap dish, teapot, uh, cookie jar, you know, that kind of thing. And they are the ones, if you've ever heard of the infamous C-3PO tape dispenser. Yeah, that tape dispenser. Um, I'll see if it's, hopefully I, I do have it and hopefully you'll see it in this video over my talking. But yes, that um, is the company that came out with some very unusual stuff. Now, I think I was really into this. And I think part of the reason I was into it was because it was right at the time where I was old enough. I was 14, wait a minute, no, 12. Wait, no, like 13. I was 13 years old when Return of the Jedi came out, going on 14. And I had earned, started earning money working at my parents' And they had a store, they had a retail business, and I started earning money there. So when I was earning money, I started using, having discretionary income to spend on things. So I began purchasing little toys and collectibles on my own. And those ceramics were among them. And I would go in, I just thought they were the coolest thing. They were these kind of, if you've, if you've ever grown up with things like Hummel, or precious moments. It was this kind of, you know, curio cabinet collectible thing. And they had a whole series of, and you'll see as I as I'm as I'm talking here, they had a whole series of of figurines based on all the characters: Luke, Han, Lando, Leia, um, C3PO, R2, Vader, everything. But because they were these cutesy little curio cabinet style of figure, they kind of all look like children. I don't know if they were meant to look like children, they just kind of did. So it was kind of weird. But there was just something charming about them. Uh, in addition, there was a bunch of mugs. Um, they had a few other things. Like I said, there was a, there was a uh, and again, you'll probably see these as I talk about them. There was a uh, stormtrooper, or not stormtrooper, a um, snow speeder toothbrush holder which I, it was great, but it seemed very impractical. Like it's the kind of thing you put on a nice hard surface on a bathtub only to knock it over and have it smash into a million pieces because they're all ceramic. So it was a little bit of an oddity. Um, they also had, like I, like I said, a land speeder snow, a soap dish. They had a, uh, like a, like a tauntaun, uh, Luke on the tauntaun teapot. So really fan, fantastic stuff. But they also had something else that I wanted to share with you. And if anybody tuned into last week's episode, you might get a hint of what this was. I don't know if it came through on the audio recording as well, but live, it was making a lot of noise. And that was a music box, but not just any music box. Oh no. And you might hear some beeps and bloops when I bring this over, but we have this. Oh, there it goes. This is the Max Rebo or Cy Snoodles and the Rebo Band Trio music box. And look at that and it's all an all speed. Now you can see just by looking at the characters, you know, there's Max, right? And you see that Max kind of spins around, right? And I'll, I'll wind this up for the full effect. And there's Sai Snoodles, but you see they almost have a childlike, almost a cherub cutesy way about them. So when they created these characters, now again, I, by the time I was a, um, you know, seventh grader, eighth grader, I had fully embraced being a musician as well, hence the name Dark Tuba. Um, hadn't played tuba yet, that, but that wouldn't come for a few years, but I was playing piano and violin and doing all sorts of stuff. So it was just such a cool thing to see the band featured so well, including a keyboardist. So I'm a big Max Rebo fan. And, uh, when it, when you can combine my love of Star Wars with my love of music, oh, what do you got? And so he has this beautiful thing. So, but the other thing I loved about this, and I remember being drawn to it, is that it made a really interesting 
it chose a very interesting piece of music. Let me get it wound up. I don't want to. Anybody recognize that? You might hear it in the background there, but yes. So that was the, it's called, I believe it is a, um, it was, it was Jabba's Baroque theme, I believe, or something with Baroque in the title. And that was a background di diegetic piece of music John Williams wrote for Return of the Jedi. And it's when you first see Jabba, when you listen, when you, so when you, when R2 and 3PO are taken by Bib Fortuna no, cha, to see Jabba, um, that is the music that is playing. It sounds very much like it's very quiet in the background. It isn't like the rocking out stuff that happens later. So I absolutely just love that this was there. Now, now when this music box came out, you could not get that music. This is the only way, you know, short of taking a tape recorder and taping it off of the movie and hearing all the, you know, oh, shoot, uh, <laughs> you know, Jabba dialogue. You really, the only way you could just listen to this piece was with this. Now, uh, and I believe in 93, um, they released an album that did include this piece of music as part of like a, an, an extras uh, CD. So it was, um, it was cool. So I, and you know, again, it's just, now I will tell you, this has, uh, you know, had a lot of wear and tear. I used to, I used to wind it up every night before bed. It was kind of a cute little way to drift off to sleep with this happy little tune, right? But uh, as you can see, even when I wound it up fully, um, it is definitely slower. I had to kind of move it along with my, I had to kind of move it along, you know, like with my hands. Um, so it's definitely running out. I was thinking about actually trying to find a new one um, to kind of replace it or, you know, I don't, I was thinking also about maybe like breaking it open and trying to fix it, but I'm not really good with music boxes. So I don't think I want to do that right now. It works enough. So, but this is like actually one that I love so much that I would consider getting another one. So. Max Rebo, the Rebo band, back before when it was just three. And, and let's be thinking, I'm gonna just say this. I am not one of those haters on the special edition. I am not a hater. I embrace whatever Star Wars is there. And what I loved about that is that they gave some more love to the musicians. They kept our three favorite, all right? They made size noodles into a CGI kind of weird thing, but <laughs> they kept them and they added like six more musicians. We can always use more musicians, come on. Like the Musicians Union Unite, right? So uh, I was fine with that. I'm like, hey, they got a horn section now and they got some backup vocals. This is cool. Got that other guy singing, ah, you know? That little guy, the little dude playing the harmonica. I'm good with it. But it all started with these three, man, these three. And I'm happy to report that this dude, he survived the job of sail barge and he wasn't present at, the can't, at that place in, Boba, in the Book of Boba Fett when it blew up. No, he wasn't there. They purposely kept him out. I think we're gonna see Max again. You heard it here first, or maybe not first, but you heard it here. All right, so that'll do it for this episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. Uh, and again, it's it's a it's a fun collector line, not very expensive. You can find these things on, on the secondary market today, 40 years later, for reasonable amounts of money. I mean, you know, you'll pay a little bit. Certain things, like um, there was a, a Yoda salt and pepper shaker, two Yodas kind of expensive but the one that I didn't get I don't think I have to check but I don't think I got it, it was an R2 and R5D4 salt and pepper shaker the two of them together that one was very rare that one you know I remember years ago like in the 90s was going for like $200 so today it's probably far far more so as I said that'll do it for this episode thank you so much for watching like subscribe hit the notification check out all the other content on Red 5 Network and until next time May the force and the toys and the weird tchotchkes like this awesome thing be with you.